Hello folks! Tonight I want to talk about how I use Stellarium to frame my object prior to imaging. I've been doing Stellarium for quite a while now and it uh, really comes in handy, especially for where I'm at. I, I've got a lot of trees in my neighborhood so and in my house, so it's uh, really important that I do this uh, work prior to imaging. You'll notice some of my other images, or some of my other videos that discuss using Stellarium. I used, I showed, I instructed people how to set it up so they can run their mount using Stellarium. And I don't really use it to run my mount. I actually just use it for prep work, uh, believe it or not. If you're new to Stellarium and you just downloaded the program, one thing you'll notice is my landscape doesn't look like the default or the normal one that you would if you just download it. And that's because I changed it. And I might show you how I did that in a later video. I like to keep my videos short, and so I'm just gonna stick to the point. I'm gonna show you how I frame the object, and that's what this video is gonna focus in on. Also, you know, someday I need to do a better intro or something like that, sort of like Dylan O'Donnell or Trevor Jones from Astro Backyard. They got really cool in intros, but I, I'm not sophisticated enough to do a video like that yet, but maybe someday. Well, hello, I'm back, and let me show you what I'm talking about with running Stellarium. I'll boot it up. I'm running 19.2, that's the latest version as of this video. All right, now one thing you'll notice if you're familiar with Stellarium, this is not the custom landscape, which is Giron's or something of that sort. Uh, I put my uh, own thing in here, and that's what this red bold thing is. And you'll also notice I have the Meridian uh, highlighted. Now let me show you this a little bit more. This is actually my field of view, uh, what's inside this circular thing. This other part outside, uh, that's trees blocking my view, so I, I can't see any of that. I'll show you how I did this custom landscape at a later date. That's its own video. So let me show you what I mean by framing. I'll go to a recent object that I did. I did it in September and October, so let me, let me scroll this back. September 13th, and let's say uh, 9 o'clock at night. Eh, make it 8, here we go. So let's look for it. It was actually the uh, Pickering's, uh, Pickering's Triangle or the Fleming's Triangle. And here we go, that which is part of the Val Nebula complex. All right, now here it is. And I wanted to get it framed up just perfectly. Now, one thing you can do with Stellarium anyways, is you can click up here, I'm way up in this corner, and it puts this box. Now this box just happens to be the uh, uh, my field of view, depending on what my sensor is. For example, if you look up here, I've got the ASI 1600. I also have a uh, EOS, a uh, Canon T3i or 600D, and that's that sensor. And I have it programmed in here. I also can program my telescope in here. There's my AstroTech 115. There is a Canon 50 millimeter lens. There is my uh, short uh, tube, my Orion short tube telescope. Here's my ED80. That's the field of view I would get using this uh, uh, Canon T3i. So you can put a whole thing, a uh, whole thing. Here's a my 200 millimeter lens that I have uh, going through that telescope. So, uh, anyways, let me go back to the uh, ASI 1600 and my AstroTech telescope. And you can even put in focal reducers and whatnot. You can program them in here. So this is my actual field of view. Now, in order to get this object perfectly, uh, my camera was set like this. And I don't know if you can see the how you can see this highlight here. And this isn't the optimal rotation. I really wanted it to uh, be rotated sort of like this. And this is uh, probably a little bit less. So this was the framing that I wanted. Okay, so that's how I would have to rotate my telescope, uh, my uh, camera on my telescope. And I also would want to, um, um, you know, plate solve on it and keep it plate solved. 
Now, what I did was I looked around in my astrophotography tool to see which objects that it had in it. And this one was indeed uh, NGC 6979. That, that was already programmed into, uh, into the program. But if I focused in on that, that's just what I mean. If I focused in on that, that wasn't the optimal view. I really wanted it to be sort of over here. So what I did is, what, or what a, one thing you can do is you can just click on a star that's really close to the center. And I would just copy down these this RA and declination. And what I would do is I would just manually input it into astrophotography tool. So you go into gear and go into objects and here's the custom uh, screen and I would just input it into there and it would and if I went to the go to it would just go to this point right where I, whatever I programmed in there and if I had to do some minor tweaking I could while I'm already in astrophotography tool. So that's how I do the frame and focusing. I, I really use this. I do this like we a week or two in advance if I know what I'm gonna what, what, what's upcoming in my uh, visible in my objects. I, I will do this early on. Now let me show you this this thing in more detail. How you can program stuff in here. So this is the uh, toolbox where you can enter your eyepiece, whatever you want. If you if you just look doing observational astronomy. Here's your lenses, uh, like your Barlow lenses. You can. Here's your sensors. So here's my uh, Canon, and these are all the specifications for my Canon. Here's my ASI 1600, and these are all the specifications for that, where you can program in here. Your telescopes. Here's the focal length, the diameter. You can program these things in here. All these things can be programmed in here, and then you just click when you want to. Whatever you know, whatever piece of equipment that you're using. Uh, hi, one other thing I wanted to mention, and that was uh, something I think I heard Chuck from Chuck's Astrophotography mention as well. Uh, I like to keep my camera oriented in one direction. I don't like to keep changing it because then you have to retake flats. I don't like to touch it once it's in a, uh, I got it set up, I like to keep it that way for as long as possible. And the orientation that it's at right now when it when I'm doing this. I've had it in this orientation since September, and it's a pretty good orientation for most of my objects. Most of my objects so far have been smaller than this, so I if I had to if the orientation wasn't perfect, I can just crop it in order to get the orientation I want. So I don't really have to mess around with changing the uh, uh, the camera itself. And Let's go back to this thing. I forgot to uh, highlight this. This was a one frame with that um, uh, Fleming's triangle. You can see it in here, and it looks pretty much exactly what I have programmed in here from...